So I'm looking through an old Dragon magazine from 1981. Yes, that's what I do. And I'm looking through and I see this famous module, The Creature of Rill. And this module has a map that I used many times in the 80s. And a big reason was it had so many cool features. You know, multi-levels that were connected by both an elevator in this central part here and also stairs in the background. You had an underwater river. You had a big cavern section. And you had a series of, you know, admittedly crude mazes, one of which, you know, ended up with the classic maze creature, the Minotaur. And it got me to thinking about how often we used to run mazes in those days in our dungeons. A lot of them were very complex. And as per the book's suggestions, we would sometimes have shifting walls or teleport chambers. All of it is designed to make the maze as difficult as possible to not only get through to, but figure out where you are in map. But this also was a tremendous pain in the ass because in those days we mapped on paper so that if you even got off, you know, by one square or whatever as you're making this elaborate maze, much less get teleported or have walls shift, you would realize your error and have to figure out where did I go wrong. Then you'd have to erase the entire thing and redraw it. And it just started to become more trouble than it was worth. So I think like the mega dungeons of old, this sort of extreme map making mechanic, a maze, fell by the wayside. You know, we became more sophisticated about playing and we wanted to move out into the greater world. We started to have, you know, encounters that were more contained. But you know, looking at this magazine and remembering, it suddenly hit me. With today's technology, in terms of mapping software, of sharing images online, and then playing online with virtual tabletop software, mazes are not as difficult to run. And so, within the labyrinth that is my brain, an idea for an episode was born. Hello again, K.R. King here, helping one and all homebrew their own D&D campaign. So today I'm going to create a maze. I'm going to find an image online, create a maze to be used in Fantasy Grounds, which is the online virtual tabletop software that I use, but obviously it could be used in any sort of online program. And you know, as always, one of my fundamental rules is keeping it simple. So I'm going to, when I find something online, I don't want to have some super elaborate, complex maze. You know, I want something that I can work with conceivably in a session or two. And then once I have my map, maybe I'll make some modifications. I'm going to go into Dungeon Draft. I'm not sure if I'm going to use Dungeon Draft for this, and I'll explain why. And I'll also talk about ideas once you have your maze map. How do you incorporate it into your campaign? Ideas on, you know, who created the maze, why it's there, that sort of thing. But first, let's go hunting for a maze. All right, so I'm going to search here, sample maze. Look at some of these images that come up here. Let's see. It's all sorts of... I don't want something too complicated. In the old days, these circle mazes were really tough to do. Uh, but I think I'm going to avoid that. I just want a square one. Let's see. This is interesting. Now this one, okay, I'm going to save this one because it's totally enclosed, which is interesting. Like, how do you get in and out? So... I will save that. I will call it Sample Maze. You know, and when I saw this maze with no exits, I thought of the prison maze. Perhaps used as amusement for some evil wizard or king to watch as his victims search their way through. And this, you know, a, a kernel of an idea starts. This is how they come. You know, inspiration. I'm thinking, okay, who would create this, you know, this prison and why and this sort of thing and then I'll develop that once I've got the maze done. And what you want to think about too is the experience of actually being in a maze and working your way through it as opposed to you know having a piece of paper with a maze and trying to solve it or whatever looking from above right it's a whole different experience. I think of the film The Shining with its garden maze and maybe there are some other examples when the old shoot 'em up games uh, we used to play where you had to explore some elaborate maze. And again, uh, you, you have that sense of dislocation, the, the walls literally closing in on you. Now in D&D, we are always mapping as we progress, so it doesn't quite have this 
you know, claustrophobic or sense of dislocation that you might have if you were just wandering through a garden maze. But the thing is, in the game sense, once the players start to wander through these halls and they're twisting and turning and there's all sorts of offshoots and they come to dead ends, they're going to realize we're in a maze. And when they come to a dead end, what happens? Is it just a dead end or is it a encounter? Is it some bit of information, whatever? You know, is there a door at the end of the dead end? If you're gonna put doors at the end of these, the players, when they come upon them, they're gonna realize, oh, there's something here. So you may wanna mix that up and just have, you know, they turn around a corner and there is whatever, the encounter. So now I'm gonna go into GIMP, which is the image manipulation software that I use. It's free, I've talked about it before. I'm gonna do a minimal amount of cleanup on this map. I don't wanna do too much changing Partly because I'm going to have to go into Fantasy Grounds and do line of sight stuff. And that's, you know, kind of a pain enough. And again, I'm trying to keep this simple, not do too much work. All right. So I'm going to take this file that I got from the internet and I'm going to open it up in GIMP. And what I'm going to do is I want to have this center area be the area where the players come in. I'm going to have like a teleport thing since it's a sealed maze. It's going to be a prison maze is what I'm thinking. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select, I'm going to use this grid so that I can snap uh, to the grid. Just makes the lines a little, uh, where is it here? Oh, lines a little bit uh, crisper and straight. And I'm going to go here and I'm just going to get rid of these two black lines, these walls here, so that now I will have uh, a center area that the players will appear in. And then I have to pick some area that is the end goal, the end of the maze. And I think if it's a prison maze and it's enclosed, it'll be maybe a dead end uh, that's as far away from this center area. Let's see here, maybe up here. This is a dead end. So what I'll do is I'll just get rid of that. And I may put doors on here. I think I'm going to do those either in... Dungeon Draft or Fantasy Grounds put the doors in. I don't want to try to draw them here. So I'm just going to get rid of this wall here so that I have kind of a larger area. So now what I'll do is I'll just trace that out uh, along the, uh, the path here. So let me get rid of this grid. Here's the route that the players will have to take from the center where they come in to the end point where they're teleported out. And this looks like a long, torturous path, but of course, they're going to have to explore that in order to get it. What that means is, look at all these other dead ends. These are paths that don't lead anywhere that could be encounters uh, in terms of going in the wrong direction. And in fact, if you look at all of these together, there are 17 of these areas, these dead ends, which could be encounters. So another question here, if you're going to have 17 dead ends, are you going to have that many encounters? Because obviously uh, that many is going to be very difficult for the players to go through in one day, right? And then the question is, are you going to allow them to have a long rest in this maze? What was the purpose of the maze if it is to test the players and they have to get through? If they can just take a rest, have an encounter, take a rest, have an encounter, it loses some of the, you know, difficulty. But if you're going to have, say, wandering monsters or whatever, do you have to have them all preset in there? Again, is there some opening to some, you know, the underdark or something where creatures could wander in? And again, those encounters don't have to just be creatures. They can be traps, you know, a la Tomb of Horrors or some combination therein. So as I said, I'm going to go into Dungeon Draft and look at this to see if I can create some walls and flooring. You know, this is an aesthetic kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to see if this is, you know, worthwhile with the map that I've got. All right, so I'm going to start a new file. I'm going to do 48 by 48 to make it square. And then I'm going to find the image here. Settings, go to Trace Image. And I will go to the file here on YouTube. Let's see here. It's in uh, 40A, Sample Maze. Bring that in. And then I'm going to increase the scale. And this is how you line it up. My goal here is to get this uh, two five foot square. So each hallway here in the maze is going to be 10 feet wide. And I look at this and I line this up like this on the outside. But notice it's off. It's off all over, and I've tried to do different uh, sizes on this, and it just doesn't work. And what I could do 
is I could make walls kind of off in terms of the uh, in terms of the grid here. So I just make this, I just trace these out and I can set the snap to half the hex. So I can go and then you've got a wall there. I'll get rid of this little point here. And I'll get rid of that. So you can already see the the walls that I'm making in Dungeon Draft are not lining up with uh, the walls on the drawing of the maze. But even worse, as I go through this process, what happens is the walls get off from the hex lines, and they're going to be off in terms of the lines that I'm going to be making in Fantasy Grounds. So you're going to have hallways. Look at there, that's uh, five and a half. This one over there is 10, but it's two half squares. And what happens when you have tokens and things and creatures moving around, uh, this is potentially going to be problematic. The other element here is it's so much work to make these walls. If they're not going to line up with Dungeon Draft, and I'm going to have to make the line of sight thing, I think it's best just not to use the software for this example. Now, since we're not going to use Dungeon Draft and we're going to go straight into Fantasy Grounds, you could go back into GIMP and you could add flooring uh, to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing. You might even be able to import symbols for doors and things. The thing is, you're going to have to go through this whole map and kind of recreate the process that you're going to do in Fantasy Grounds to create line of sight. So, you know what? I don't think it's that big a deal to the players if I just have white flooring. Uh, what's going to be fun is exploring the maze and the creatures they encounter. All right, so now I'm in Fantasy Grounds, and I'm going to import that image, the maze here. I gotta go down here to, where is this now? 48. Uh, oh, it's a ping file, there we go. All right, so I have my maze, and now I wanna put my grid on this map. This is what I'm gonna use to line up uh, the tokens, obviously. So what I like to do is I go up to an area on the map here where I have three sides so that I can easily line this up. So right in there. Cool. And I line this up. And my goal, as I said, I want to get this to be, each of these to be 10 feet. Looks like it's about what, 32. Then you can just nudge that to get it in with the lines on the map. That looks pretty good. I get 10 foot corridors there, but I just want to check. I'll go down to a corner here and check. Uh, looks good. Bring that in. And now I'm going to do line of sight. What this means, I go into the line of sight tool here, right here, pick line, and I'm just going to trace these lines. And it doesn't snap to the grid. It'll snap to the other line of sight lines. So you sort of have to be careful. And you just go through and pick and you go along. And again, this process is going to take me about 15 minutes. I'm going to speed it up here so that uh, you don't have to watch this all. But that's about how long it took me to do this. You get better at it as you go along. And again, a maze is, you know, one of the most meticulous, I'll fix that, line of sight things uh, that you can do. So I'm going to go through this in super fast motion. Uh, but you can see I'm just tracing all of these, and that way, when the players travel through here, as we'll see, uh, these walls uh, will be walls that they can't go through from the player's side, and also they'll restrict sight. And again, you're uh, lining these up. They snap, this magnetic snap. And uh, let's see, keep going here. And at some point here, I think I see some that are not quite there, but let me just go through here. And again, not the most exciting thing. I suppose I could put some music in here or something. Alright. Going along. Oh, and then I see here I've got a mistake. So I'm going to zoom up there. These are not meeting, so then you go to the edit tool, which is this arrow, and you line these up and then pull that down a little bit there and there. Now that they are snapped together, I know everything will be set and I can go back to making my line of sight.
All right, so now that I have that, I can see how the line of sight works here. Uh, if I turn this on, all right, and then what I need to do is go to the combat tracker and I'll pick one of the player characters from my group, place them in the center, and there is what the players, this is the GM perspective, that's what they're seeing, right? And as you move the token around, uh, the line of sight goes. I see some little breaks in there that have to be fixed. But as you can see when they move around, and this is, uh, I'm going to share this with the player so that if I go down now to the player's perspective, that's what the player sees. Everything else is blank. Notice behind them in the areas that they've already gone, even though it's gray, they can't see it, can't go through the walls there right? That way you don't lose the sense of where you were, like in a real, it's like, like making a map. If you made the map, you'd still know the areas that you had been to. So that is really useful. And again, I can't go through those walls. So the players can travel again. They can go uh, 60 uh, feet per, or I'm sorry, 30 feet a turn, six squares. Uh, so again, there's a little leak in there. I'm going to fix that. Uh, let's see here. In order to fix that, I go here and I look and look at this. It's not quite connected. So I just snap that there. Now it's connected. Uh, it's still showing the remnants of that. And this is what you do. I would clean this all up. Again, it didn't take that long, you know, 15 minutes or so to do this. Oh, there's a spot. All righty. And... Uh... And this, I'm going to make a door here. This is the door to the final chamber. I would do this in all the dead end areas that I'm going to have an encounter that I want a door, right? So the players come to that, they listen to the door, uh, and when they come up to that door, uh, it prevents their movement. So I have my map, and I've got a great start on my line of sight considerations. Yeah, I want to do a little more tweaking uh, to get rid of any gaps or whatever that might exist there. But the next question is, who built this prison maze and why? And then how do the players come into contact with it? And that, my friends, will be for next time. So if you like my videos, please subscribe. I'm always looking for more subscribers. Please leave comments. Uh, I always answer them. And of course, keep playing D&D, &D, my friends, and tell somebody else about it.